Mike, we now live in an era where all coaches want to go viral, but it has to be organic. You somehow keep finding ways to become these viral sensations between the I'm a man, I'm 40, and now this fantastic haircut that you've got going on. What gives? Well, I, I think it's being natural. Uh, they, they've all happened accidentally. Um, of course, the, the rant uh, would be the one that goes down in history, but that wasn't planned. And then the hair wasn't planned. The snake hunting, that wasn't planned either. I was just trying to give a little pub to the guys that took an afternoon to take me snake hunting. But uh, I think what I found is when you're relaxed, and we have a terrific social media, media relations department, and we do a lot of thinking and try to find ways to sell our brand. Because, you know, the ones we're going after, the 17, 18, 19 year olds, you know, they're on those phones all the time and they're seeing what's going on. Uh, you've got a you got a birthday in just a few weeks, Coach. Isn't that right? A month? Maybe about a yeah, month? About three three weeks or so. All right. Uh -huh. So if you're a man at 40, what are you at 50? Gosh, I don't know. I, I thought a lot. <laughs> I'm really wondering what happened to the thir last 30 years of my life, to be honest <laughs> with you. But uh, you know that that'll be a big one. And I thought about having some kind of a big uh, blowout for it, but it's right in the middle of preseason camp, and I'm sure we'll figure out something. But uh, that was that was quite a day. You guys went. 10 and 3 back to back seasons. So, what is it going to take for you guys to kind of break through that glass ceiling and get into that, get in that playoff system? You know, we, we're really close. Mm -hmm. um, we need to stay healthy. We've got a returning quarterback, you know, in Mason Rudolph that's, you know, we'll, we'll have a shot at the Heisman if he plays well and our team plays well. And we have fantastic receivers, James Washington, a potential award, national award winner. And we're faster on defense than, than people think. And if we can mature at the corner position, can find a backup running back that we trust to hand the ball seven or eight times a game, stay healthy, get the ball to bounce our way a few times, we'll have a shot. And this year, the first of that championship game in the Big 12, obviously, you, like you said, you were right there last year. Right. What does that mean for recruiting now that you can sell that point? Well, I think it's good for a, a lot of things. One, in recruiting, uh, the players, the young people, they want to be in that game. They, they like to be on, in the spotlight. Uh, and then secondly, it gives us that point, you know, when they start adding them up and then they get that committee gets together. Um, the Big 12, the powers, you know, realize that we need that extra point. And the one thing that's good with ours is it'll be the two teams with the best record. Two best teams in the league will, will go against each other. We think that will help us. Damian brought up, what's it going to take to get back into the playoffs? Give me a little bit of runway on this on this question. Mm -hmm. So I thought you should have been in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. I thought an injustice had been done on your schedule. That Central Michigan loss right. was a W. Right. So don't please give me coach speak. Don't, mm -hmm. Nobody likes to look at the past. Everybody wants to look forward, and everyone follows Bill Belichick's model over on to Cincinnati. Right. But what does that loss do for you as that season goes on? I mean, I've read about your regret on that last play call. Right. How hard is that to get out of your mind? Well, I agreed with you last year when you were talking about it too. Just so you know, I, I was I was with you, and I and I saw it, and I'm I was like, okay. Yeah. I was bringing the cabbage patch back from the day. So. Uh, it just went viral again. Yeah, that's right. But um, it it wears on me because uh, we made a decision of what to do, and that was something that was thought through when I was calling plays back in 2008 and nine. We said, okay, if there's five seconds or less in a game, how do we want to finish it? Well, you're going to draw back and throw it as far as you can. As long as the ball doesn't go out of bounds in the air, they can't stop the clock, and they really can't stop it otherwise. And the game's over. So once it, was, once it happened and they, we were getting together, and there was an extended period of time for people to make the correction, the people in the booth and the nine guys that were on the field. And the discussion took place that there was an, a, an extended play. And I, you know, I mentioned, I said, I, I, I don't think that's right. I've never heard of this. And plus, we've researched this. Unless this rules change. Where I failed was I didn't know the rules well enough. The book's this thick, OK? And people can say what they want. Not everybody knows all the rules. I thought I did, but I wasn't able to say, I know that rule's wrong. And we let the play happen. And that's what's hard to get out of your mind, because the guys won the game. They, they won 11 games last year. Um, I put 11 wins on their rings uh, because somebody said, well, how do you do that? Well, I paid for them, so I can do whatever I want. Uh, and I want them to know that, but it's a great life lesson. Um, and until we lost that last game, as you were saying last year, it was going to be a factor because if, if we would have beaten Oklahoma, then what were people going to do? Because in a sense, it became a human right. error, and that would have been a difficult 
thing for me to get to the players. I mean, it sounds like, Coach, you still think about it. Clearly, you've got I, I, Oh, no question. I, I think about all those things much more than I think about winning the Fiesta Bowl because those things bother me. Uh, we, I'm type A. You know, I want things to be done right all the time. And things that aren't, they wear on you. And that's the one area that, uh, you know, I see Coach Snyder from Kansas State walking around here, and I think, how's he coaching at the age he is to do what he's done for so long? Maybe he can forget things a lot easier than I do, but um, those things wear on you as a coach. If Snyder goes, I'm a man, I'm 77. Yeah. Would you take I mean, I, now that, that is a real man <laughs> to be 77 in coaching like we do today. Um, every time I see him, I've passed him three or four times. Every time I see him, I think, God, that's unbelievable. So. What's it going to take to win the Big 12 this year? Well, somebody in the league has got to beat Oklahoma. I don't think there's any question about it. You know, they talk about the Big 12, and, um, you know, a few years ago, the Big 12 was on the big stage, and now they're saying, okay, what, do, what does the Big 12 have to do? Well, the Big 12's got to get in the playoffs and win it. Right. That solves all the problems. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're in a profession that if, if you win and do it right, you don't have any questions. Well, in our league right now, somebody's going to have to beat Oklahoma and get them out of the saddle. But until then, um, we can all just sit around and talk about it. But uh, with the teams, with all of us, I mean, there's no reason to hide it. It's what you got to do.